Okay, I'm actually starting this for like the third time because I pretty much hated how I said and spoke about things. So if you're hearing this, just know that this is a learning process and I'm trying to be more confident in my ability to speak up about things. And yeah. This is literally only my second episode but as promised that i would come up with more of a procedure for this so if you haven't seen the first episode it was just essentially my introduction talking about taking up space and all the things wellness and i gave a brief idea of what i think i will be talking about on the podcast so hi welcome my name is elaida J. to start off I want to say that what I'm grateful for, what I'm grateful for is to be in the school I always wanted to go. And I wanted to say that for this week because literally I had my last first day of school and I was just like thinking about how when I was like in third grade and I was sitting there and I was like planning out my life and saying what I wanted to do and the places I want to go and how it kind of like manifested that I would go to my dream school and even though I did it in a different way than I expected as I was in third grade I still ended up in the same places and got accepted to the same places that I knew I wanted to go so I am definitely grateful to have the opportunity and that it became realistic for me to continue on with education. I don't know why there's so many planes passing where I live today, but it is extremely loud. So anyways, one thing I want to do for this podcast is because I do like tarot and oracle cards and stuff like that. If you don't like those type of things, that's completely fine. But the deck I used while I was taking notes because I felt called to use it. I used my new deck. It's called the Sacred Self Care Deck by Jill Pyle. And the card I pulled, funny enough, was card 33, which was make a vision board. And I was like ecstatic to get that because Realistically, I was having such a hard time of knowing what I really wanted to speak about this week. But before I get into the topic, I'm also going to say my good experience of the week and my learning experience. My learning experience actually inspired this episode. So to start off, my good experience of this week was when I was leaving school one day, I met like the nicest human being on the train. She said that she was German. I don't know really how to explain how we got talking because there weren't a lot of open seats left by the time I got on the train. So I just sat next to this girl with blonde hair and she had like these really, really beautiful pants on. Like they were white, but then the pattern on it, it kind of was like, it had like this wavy like texture. And then you could just saw like swans and like fish. It had like naked women on top. At first, um, it was kind of awkward because I thought that she was getting up when she wasn't because like, you know, like if you take public transportation, like there's always like signals, like when people like shift and move around, usually kind of means that they're getting ready to get off. And since I was on the outside, I didn't want to block her way. So I got up and then she's like, oh no, I still have some stops to go. And she was like really sweet about it. Then this guy comes on the train and he kind of has like this kind of suspicious look like the type of look on someone where they look really intimidating like they would like punch anyone in the face so I kind of like moved in and then since I'm on the outside seat and she's on the inside seat like and originally like there was like more space I slightly moved in because he looked like he would punch someone in the face but um anyways so then I apologized to her because I got too close and then she's like oh no you're fine it's okay and then I complimented her pants 
and she was like so happy about it then she was telling me about where she got it and she's like thank you so much like I was a little worried about the pattern and people thinking it was weird or something and I was like oh no it kind of reminds me of Venus which was like one of the best compliments for her because she said something like she studied fine art and was going to be a teacher so I thought that was like pretty cool and I actually like complimenting people because you know, it makes their day sometimes because I know a lot of people get skeptical about comments, especially nowadays. It could be like very backhanded or you never know like someone's intentions, but like I really actually liked her pants because I'm like really into fashion and arts and graphics. So of course I would notice like small details like that because that's what I was thinking the whole time. And I consider that a good experience because you know, the stereotypes of when you're on transportation and especially with things happening in transportation lately in urban areas it's actually um horrifying we ended up having like the best conversation like I gave her a recommendation for a food place like she was just so nice and it kind of just reminds you like people can still be like nice and kind so that was my good experience of the week and I thought It also serves as a lesson of like, don't be afraid to compliment people because people can always tell when you're being genuine and it can really make someone's day and can cause a good conversation. You never know. And then for my learning experience with the week that actually inspired what we're talking about today, there is this YouTuber that I love watching. Her name is Kelly Stamps. So she makes a video and she calls it, I'm never approaching a man off the streets again. And I made a comment like four weeks ago and she actually liked it. So I was like super happy because like literally she's such a mood. So that comment, it got like 200 and something likes, like 218. But then the comments underneath it, like a lot of them were so, they were either like negative or like I originally brushed it off. But then this one person comments, like, really, kind of, like, upset me, in a way. Like, not upset me, like, oh my, but it would just felt, like, weird. So, what my comment was, nope, it's I don't chase, I don't attract energy only. I learned my lesson the hard way. So, right off the bat, that comment, I'm just, like, firsthand talking about my experience. Because... All I'm saying, I obviously didn't go into detail about this when I'm commenting because it was just like a quick thing and I'm like relating like this is why I can't. One thing that happened to me is like once I started like not using my energy and stopped chasing after relationships that and I was like focusing more on myself and like focused on being who I wanted to be that's when someone comes out and tells me they like me and I never had anyone like actually tell me they liked me like with other people it's like I like it was like always like complicated where it seemed like they liked me but never liked me enough to make it into anything more so all these like situation ships I guess So it's just like a quick comment. Like, yeah, I relate to that. The comment has, the comment section for my comment, it's like some of them are like funny, but most comments are like negative, not necessarily negative towards me, but certain ones were. So this person, okay, so one person said like, even attracting, you gotta be careful because some will come to you with a whole woman at home. Like that one, it was actually kind of funny. Because it wasn't, like, attacking what I'm saying or, like, criticizing it. But it's just, like, oh, be careful. You know what I mean? And then someone else, they go, I mean, this one, like, annoyed me, like, a few weeks ago. But not so much now. They were, like, attracting and manifesting isn't reliable in love and war, lol. So what's interesting is someone else asks him, like, are you in an amazing, healthy, happy relationship? The person who said that goes, I'm single. And, like, one of the few comments that was, like, positive just goes, amen. (laughs) Funny enough. But the person that said that, like, 
manifesting and stuff is not reliable when it comes to like love and war whatever I said I basically explained like it worked for me and I said like I can only speak from my own experience and then they they were like oh I'm happy to hear that I wasn't implying that it's impossible just saying it isn't reliable because many people aren't so lucky chasing is actually more reliable when we pursue what we need instead of what we want and I actually didn't like see that reply until like yesterday because I don't go on YouTube a lot and the only reason um I saw it because someone else replied and this was the one that got on my nerves because this is why I said it was a lesson one because I know like when you comment on social media and like when you express your opinion you're always gonna get like some people who agree with you some people who disagree and some people who will say just straight out the most weird and disrespectful things so this person comments you'll soon learn that you are and they spelled they had even like a spelling mistake but anyways but you are basically selecting for high levels of narcissism otherwise most guys won't risk approaching a woman with a cold open something weird to say so then i reply actually i'm selecting x y and z like i'm not gonna elaborate and like spread my business yet but like yeah and then they reply that's not i and then they reply in such a rude way they go that's not i attract energy bro that's you and that person being friends and having a long history before the romance not exactly what we're talking about so what i find interesting is they're saying that to the original commenter so then I reply back, I'm like, they were my friend, but we weren't close to a point where I, we weren't even that close at that point, you know? Because you know, like, how you have, like, friends, and you're, like, friends, but it's, like, weird. Like, you have, like, you know the same people, you talk to the same people, but it was never, like, you hung out alone, and it's not like you talk to them outside of when you saw them pretty much that's the type of situation that was going on like we were friends I consider them a friend because at the time I mean I wouldn't consider a lot of people friends but if you were like remotely kind and I can have a conversation with you and we got along well I would consider you at least on some levels a friend but obviously, as I matured, my definition of what a friend is and isn't changed. So, you know. But that was just me not knowing. But I did consider them a friend at that point in time. And then I just, like, say a bunch of stuff that I honestly don't feel like reading. Because it pretty much, like, described my entire backstory. But then I said, you misinterpreted what I said because you're not a spiritual person. Which is an assumption since you made an assumption about my relationship, bro. Because I really don't like when people call people, like, random people on the internet, bro or sis. Like, why do you do that? Like, it's weird. It's actually weird. And you don't know people's boundaries. Because that gives me the x. but anyways... And then I further say, like, also, how are you saying that's not what we were talking about on the thread if it was my original post, which I knew the intention behind? When I made the comment four weeks ago, I meant it more as focusing on your action to attract those who are aligned with you. The fact you assumed it to be narcissistic says more about what you consider important in a relationship because I said nothing about like, acting coldly nor appearances. Because... It's just interesting to me that I say, like, a simple sentence of, I don't trace, I attract. What does that have to do, at no point of that sentence said anything about acting coldly towards people? Because you can not chase anyone, but that doesn't necessarily mean you act coldly either. It also doesn't mean that you would only be obsessive about looks either. So I just found that interesting. But I consider that my learning experience of the week because I was upset about it. But then I kind of sat down and thought like, okay, 
if I want to be a content creator, people are always going to like react a certain way. And I need to get used to people reacting in a way that upsets me and not let it kind of get underneath my skin. So that's why I consider that a learning experience. But on the something good that came out of it was this idea of talking about law of attraction. Because I feel like a lot of people don't understand it. My other idea for this week was talking about like dreams and dream jobs and stuff like that. Because since I started school, that was also a big topic of discussion this week. But then I decided to be general and and connect both ideas and just talk about law of attraction in a general sense. So that's what we're doing today. So before I say things I think you should know about law of attraction, I'm going to give like the definition of it from research and really explicitly say what it is. So when I looked it up, it said law of attraction is essentially to make you have a more optimistic outlook in the world. And the idea of it is like attracts like. So negative thinking attracts negative experiences. Positive thinking attracts positive experiences. And it's the concept of removing the negativity from your life. So that was like the definitions I found. And I came up with a short list of things I think people should know about manifestation because I honestly think the concept is very misunderstood. And also I know the idea of it is very new age. And even like when I first heard about it, I was like skeptical of the whole concept. And I will get into that in my last point because I want to tell a whole different perspective that I don't hear enough people talk about. So the first thing I think you should know is it like law of attraction doesn't mean to ignore negativity. I know that's kind of weird with how I just described it. Realistically speaking, there are things that happen. You can't control what happens, but you can control how you see it. But what I think is an important part to mention in manifestation and stuff like that is you should still feel those experiences because you should still let yourself feel. A lot of times when we do talk about like self-help and spirituality and bettering ourselves, they make it sound like we shouldn't feel those range of emotions. And honestly, feeling a range of emotions is just simply a part of the human experiences. I'm actually taking emotions in society. And one interesting thing we spoke about in class is why emotions was not a topic so much in sociology is because of sexism. That's what we talked about it so far. I only had one class. So of course, I'll be learning more about this and I hope to share what I know eventually. Realistically, things happen out of our control. And it's important to remember the only thing you can control is you. But I don't think that means ignoring when you feel negative. I think give yourself a moment to feel and react. And as long as the reaction doesn't hurt anyone, and as long as the reaction doesn't come back to bite you, don't make a rash decision impact the rest of your life what I'm saying like be careful of what you decide to do because I know like when people do get upset like sometimes they go on full rage of on social media have I been guilty about that yes but I also choose my words very carefully so if you're a person that's like so in the heat of the moment some people use words that they definitely shouldn't use and it comes back to bite them allow yourself to react feel how you feel like if you're sad cry 
let yourself cry and understand it's okay to cry if you're angry scream hit your pillows if you need to do something to release that anger then once you get over that moment let yourself breathe and then release the emotion and then flip the narrative this one i wanted to actually tell a story because i wanted to talk about something that happened to me in the summer where when it was happening i was like so upset so overwhelmed and it felt like nothing was going my way and that everything was falling apart and that's all I could have saw. I was trying so hard to get a summer job. I don't remember if I mentioned this the last episode so like if I did just please skip this part but I tried to get a summer job. It went really well. The process went really well. It was up to the point where I was like very much at like the last steps of like the interview process where you kind of send in referrals because it was like a five-step thing. And I also turned down an art internship because after the referrals, the person who spoke with one of the person I referred told them like they were definitely like gonna hire me. But then at the very last second, we were supposed to have a call And then they said they had to cancel it. And then they called me the next day. Well, they didn't call me. They ended up emailing me saying like they can only accept one intern. It was originally supposed to be three. So basically I could not work this summer. And I was really upset because I also like already denied a job because I thought I was going to get that one and last minute they changed their minds. I also, now that I'm like away from that point, I also realize that's just a learning experience for me. Like don't deny anything unless you see like a contract or something. But you live and you learn. And of course I was upset while that was happening and even like into the beginning of the summer because then I felt like I had to compensate for not getting a job. Eventually, by the end of the summer, I did a lot of things that I don't think I would have done if I did get the job. And I, because I'm the type of person who gets consumed by work, and this summer I really set forth my boundaries and I really started to do all these things and going after certain things. And I really just kind of changed my life a bit by not having a job by having the space and the time to really focus on myself and take care of myself. Because I will admit last semester was not a good semester for me. I was stressed out, like the semester started bad. I literally got COVID at the end of the year, right before New Year's Eve and New Year's. So my year wasn't starting off ideal and it kind of like messed up my entire plan to relaunch my blog because I was gonna do more blog posts, but because I got sick, it kind of messed up my entire like schedule plan because I was so sick that I honestly couldn't eat or move or anything. I still had my taste and smell, but I lost my appetite. I just didn't have the energy. It was so bad and I wasn't eating. Like I couldn't even eat like crackers or like drink soup. Like I just felt too sick to eat. And the one thing got me out of it was like, I think it was a burrito. My point is being in situations is like being in a zoomed in picture. It's all blurry. You don't understand what to really make of it. You can't tell what's happening. And then as time goes on, it's kind of like the process of zooming out. Eventually when you finish zooming out and you're far away from the point, you eventually do get to a point of clarity where you can see the whole picture and you can understand. And I think that's an important aspect that's not really talked enough about in Law of Attraction because it's just negative thinking, negative experiences, but like we also are human and humans go through a long ranges of emotions. To really look at it, I think law of attraction is not about like, oh, being positive all the time, but 
It's about trusting that everything that happens is always going to be in your best interest. Good things happen, bad things happen. Your mindset changes what you do. And I think law of attraction is essentially about just the mindset, but that does not mean you can't feel emotions. And if we stop looking at emotions as a good thing or a bad thing, and if we just saw them as a human experience, that we would be in a lot of a healthier situation. The next thing I wanted to talk about is manifestation and law of attraction is partially mindset, but is also aligned actions. So I also feel like this also is something not talked about enough because aligned actions is essentially knowing like the intention of your actions, like knowing the why. And things honestly could be prevented if you don't really have a clear intention. Okay, so I'm going to go back with like the comment and the story that I was talking about before that inspired this. One thing about me is I am 100% a hopeless romantic. I always loved love and I loved reading and I loved seeing like cartoons and until I learned to value myself without a relationship... I didn't even know anyone had romantic interest in me. Looking back at it, I feel like I wanted relationships out of desperation because I wanted to be loved. I wanted to experience the things I saw in books and TV. Honestly, I don't have like a lot of examples of romance and love and stuff like that. But one thing I did see was my brother and his now wife, like they've been in a relationship since eighth grade and I always wanted like to be with someone for that long I always wanted to go through a high school romance and holding hands holding back foot, growing up together I don't know I always thought that was something very special but after I graduated and left the environment that broke me in the first place like my high school was just very toxic for me is I had like a deep reflection if I genuinely liked my crushes or if I just liked the idea of them. And then, yeah, some of them I did like as people, but there were a good amount that I liked solely because I thought of us like, they were like my opposites or something. I liked that they were so different from me and that could be like a cute couple it's like this like relationship trope because I don't know I just was that girl I was very imaginative and I was a reader and I loved love like I just loved love but my point is my intention for wanting a relationship wasn't good and that's why the universe was ultimately blocking that because if I did get in a relationship when I was like that, I would probably end up in a toxic relationship because of how much I valued being in a relationship. Once I started to learn about me and learn how to kind of like be outside of a relationship and think about like building up my individuality, that's when it was like, okay, she's probably like strong enough she's good enough and I think I now see as like that was like my protection and the last one because I'm pretty sure this episode is long and I'm so so sorry is I wanted to talk about law of attraction from like a non-biased point of view so this was something I really wanted to mention because even like I said before earlier that I was even kind of like skeptical of the process and stuff like that. The thing is, I found two articles that kind of spoke about like why they didn't believe in law of attraction. The point I'm calling law of attraction is just a mindset concept, but it doesn't erase universal struggles slash problems that we have in our society. And I feel like this is really important because like I said, this podcast, I wanna bring a whole new perspective to the conversation of wellness. 
And that's something I'm deeply passionate about. I faced discrimination before, especially with the environment I grew up in, especially with my high school. Some things like the articles, which I'll probably leave in the show notes in case anyone's interested to reading the entire articles, because I found it interesting in my research. So I think other people will too. But some things they did say about why they didn't believe in it is that they feel like manifestation well not manifestation but law of attraction promotes individualism and too much focus on the self they say it encourages people to repress feelings and encourages victim blaming it encourages people like if they're not thinking a certain way that that's why their life is messed up those points they're fair points i will say that even though i do believe in law of attraction now Of course, I did feel like law of attraction did ignore certain biases. But once I started to think of law of attraction as just a tool for mindset, instead of thinking it as the end all of be all, that's when it kind of just take it with a grain of salt, basically is what I'm saying. Because all these things with spirituality, there's so many... There's always so much more to learn. It doesn't erase universal issues. And it does have an attitude of like, it's up to you to succeed and stuff like that. And it puts too much because of course there are blockages, especially to those who face discrimination. But I will say having the law of attraction mindset also kind of helps you through those negative feelings and I will say it helps you get out of a negative state faster my end thoughts on this is you can't change what people assume about you law of attraction reminds me to be who I am meant to be because the thing about the world is our world looks different and different eyes and our experience are made from multiple perspectives and I'm not gonna sit here and go deeper into that I'm just gonna say that we all have different perspectives and a lot of those a lot of the things that how we see the world is it's just a mixture of things of our own characteristics of the things that make up our identity, our environment, even our geographic. So there are a lot of things and that is something that's out of our control about how people assume other people to be. The best we can do is focus on our actions and doing something great if you want to be great. I hope that made sense because I feel like if I wrote that, it would come out a lot better. And I just, I want to get better at saying things. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I really hope it made you think. And I really, really hope I just didn't come off as too annoying because yeah so before I go your journal prompt for today is what are the top three things you want to manifest in your life before you even write that down come up with things you're grateful for think about where you're at think about where you want to be that will help you manifest that is my tip I have done it before and I really hope that suggestion helped And now I'm officially ending it here because it is 11.51 p.m. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next Thursday.